free shipping. Now, just in just instead of just saying, "Hey, you get free shipping," I kind of brought them into the fold and said, "Hey, you can imagine that if this ladder weighs seventy pounds, what your shipping is going to cost." And if I was smarter, I probably would have went to the U.S. Postal uh, site and actually taken a screenshot of what shipping would have cost. But I didn't do that. I just said, "If you order through the link on this page, you're going to be able to get free shipping." But I used that. That's the only really hook that I could come up with. And I knew it was something they were concerned about because they can't go to, uh, at the time, they couldn't go to, like, their Lowe's or whatever and just get that right get that ladder. They had to order it online, so they're, they have, can be concerned with that. So do you understand the hook? The hook is like the strategy going in. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, um, I think that I grasped that concept fairly well. It's getting it down on the page. and Gotcha. And gotcha. converting so, them or drawing them in and keeping them on the edge of the seat type of situation. Perfect. And you don't, again, you don't have to be this fabulous copywriter. You just have to kind of know what they're thinking. So let's take a look at one of your sites here, Matt. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. So this is your dog training site. And I can tell that I think you said you had done some dog training actually for people at yes. one point. Yes, yes. So I can tell you probably knew a lot about the dog training stuff. Did you write these articles yourself? Yes, I did. Um, so I, well, I, majority, I, I'd say 80% of them I wrote, and then the other 20 I got from you know the uh, vendor and rewrote them myself. Gotcha. Okay. So this is pretty typical, and I'm not coming down on you, but this is pretty typical of what I see on a lot of folks' site. They have some good content in there. Um, you have good alternatives for him to hurt to chew on, go to a shopping spree, uh, so on and so forth. But it's not really strategic on how where it's leading them. All right. So let's just take this one idea right here. Let's say we're going to do a whole site on stop your dog's chewing, or we could do one page. It doesn't matter. But let's kind of see what, what kind of conversations they're having. And Matt, with technology these, these days, it is so much easier to do right now. So one of the things that I like to do is go to our regular old Google AdWords keyword tool, or we, we can go to just the Google front page itself. And if you go to these more search tools, you can do related searches. So. Here's the problems people are having. Dogs chewing the furniture, dogs chewing the carpet, dogs chewing their own feet. Um, they're looking for toys. Maybe that's because of an alternative. Now, what I'm doing is not, I'm not looking at these keywords for like search volume. I'm looking at them as the way people are, are typing Thinking. them in right. and kind of get into their head. So the they want to mind stop. share, the hair on fire situation right. where what? What, how do I stop my dog from doing this? Exactly. So um, dog chewing wood. So they're looking at, okay, what they're saying is, is there an alternative? Can I give them something else to chew on that will stop chewing on my furniture? Um, how about a spray? Maybe they've got the, the nasty taste spray that they can spray it on, uh, on things, but there's, maybe there's a problem with that. Maybe you know, they, don't want it, they can't spray everything in the house, or maybe it makes it smell bad. I don't know, but they, they look at spray as maybe one of the alter, alternatives. Uh, this is a question that begs, why is my dog doing it? Dog separation anxiety. Maybe they're do dog chewing because of dog separation anxiety. Um, this may be dog whisperer. Maybe somebody out there that's the dog whisperer is going to see what that does. Yeah, that's a trainer. That's a trainer. Yeah, so Caesar Milan, maybe the yeah. dog whisperer, right? He so, is the man, yeah. Uh, let's try to do this. Somebody's actively searching stop dog chewing. Let's see if we get any. This is can often be useful here because Google will, will place these on what's the most highly searched. So we got dog stop dog chewing spray. So look at that. That's one of the big things they have on their mind share. And I don't think you have that anywhere on this page. And that's something that they're wondering about. That's something that they're thinking. So we might kind of put this in our little file here. Stop dog chewing spray. Um I very often get lost where I'm at, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I do the same thing. Uh, 
But it looks like one of the big things that's really frustrating is furniture on carpet. Um, so furniture, carpet. And the reason I'm using this site is because I don't know a whole lot about it. I thought about using your XBAC site, but I thought it would be more helpful if I kind of walked along this process with you, with me not knowing a whole lot about it. That makes sense. Okay, so. Uh, I can already tell my, you know, I've, I've watched you do this several times, and I kind of get it, but I just realized that I'm doing it the opposite direction. I take the product. Mm-hmm gather up keywords and trying to understand the market that way and try and kind of go backwards you know work from the product back to the customer instead of trying to right and you can you can do that it takes a little more experience though because then you have to say okay well who's really buying this um, and you have to kind of figure out what who's the hair on fire crowd with the product but it does make it simpler when you look at the market first you can actually do it either way and I've had people chastise me uh, <laughs> going about this way but you can do it either way but what I found for me and I find more options when I actually do it starting with the market first because there's no reason Matt why you couldn't sell both types of products you can find a really great selling spray in here and say, hey, if you're if you're wary of spraying this spray, and we're going to look at maybe what some of their fears, what their thoughts are on this spray, spray here in a minute. But this may be another alternative for you, actually working with uh, your dog's mindset. I'm not saying that right, but the, your dog your dog may have this dog separation anxiety, and you might give a right. paragraph on that. And you're not going to be able to cure that with a spray, right? So then you go into why this this uh, ebook may be the best solution for them. Does that make sense? Targeting more than one product on one page? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, because that's what they're already thinking anyways, right? Gotcha. Uh, and, and by and large, it looks like, uh, I mean, this is the first informational one here. Well, this, this one, dog chewing wood, dog chewing problem. This is the first informational one right here. But when we go stop dog chewing, the very... Big ones they're looking at spray. Physical. That's problem. what they're thinking. And then furniture, shoes, carpet, bed, wires, paws, feet, leash. So I stop dog chewing. But this is by and large the big thing. This is what your market already thinks is the is the solution. So you're kind of working against your market. The the, the desire is already there, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, I was looking at it more of the actual dog training helping the owner train the dog not to do that when they're looking for the easy fix, just spray and it will stop. Right. And I'm not saying that you can't lead them further on into that, but you might want to have yeah. those. You'll probably make a lot of money on these stop dog chewing sprays if you can find a good one. Gotcha. That's just what it appears to me right off the bat. Is no, I, I'm totally with you. I'm totally seeing what you're talking so about. So part of being a great affiliate is matching the right offers with the right people and a lot of that is by not reinventing the wheel it's easier to uh, tap into already existing desire than to try to create new desire um, I was doing some coaching with a guy who's a really brilliant marketer and uh, uh, on his own right and he was trying to sell acne ebooks to teenagers basically I'm like dude I'm like they, they don't want ebooks man they, they want proactive. They want something they can put on their skin. And he's like, oh, I know, but you know, I think it, I, my copy is good enough. I can convince him. I'm like, dude, you've got like billions of dollars being spent on TV advertising and P. Diddy and Jessica Simpson and telling them that proactive, something that they put on their faces away, it's going to be really, really hard to convince them in a one-page landing page that it's, that's not the, the, the way. Right. So, um, so I'm just looking at what the market's telling me. So let's go to the regular old boring Google AdWords keyword tool and see if it tells us anything different. AdWords keyword tool. And again, I don't I don't use this at this stage in the market to gauge 
you know, like search phrases and stuff. I'm just looking at to see what the conversation is that they're having in their head. So let's just start with dog chewing. And I can almost never read these. William R S U P D F N. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I always love phrases with verbs. You know what a verb tells me at the beginning of a phrase? That means it's there. It's a market actively, actively searching for a solution. So, it's a really good sign that this is one of the first kind. There's another actively searching solutions there. Um, stop dog chewing. So, what I'm looking at here is thirty-three thousand one hundred for stop dog chewing. And I'm wondering where the sprays come in. I'm not seeing the sprays, actually. But that's OK. What we can do here is uh, let's go stop dog chewing. And what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for the angle. What angle am I going to take? What's my hook going to be um, for this? And how can I serve this market? Because I do want to put good content in there because that's key. And I have this saying that new ideas want to have babies. So when you give somebody a new idea, it automatically gives them this kind of like aha moment, what I call a braingasm, and they want to continue with that. They want to get, you know, they, they want to, those ideas to spawn. So, um, how to stop dog from chewing, stop dog from chewing. This is actually, look at this. You could probably do a whole site on just stop dogs chewing. Right, yeah. Um, stop dog chewing, stop dog chewing. I'm looking for that spray, which I'm not seeing. Let's just type it in there. So dog chew spray, wow. So not nearly as many searches. And what I'm trying to do is gauge how big of, of a mind share that this actually is. And it may not be as big as we thought. So chewing spray, 2,900. Um, so it's only about one tenth of that. Um, chewing spray can be anything, though, couldn't it? Really? You're right. Yeah, chewing spray could be anything. It's too broad. Anti-chew spray for dogs, 140. Stop chewing spray. But what I'm looking at is the comparison from 33,000 all the way to less than a thousand. So it may not be quite as big of that conversation as as just when I looked at it and Google the way it was there. But don't you take into account, wouldn't you say that stop dog chewing spray would be much further down the buying cycle? Oh yeah, totally. They're, they've so, already decided, they've already decided, that's a, good, that's a good call, they've already decided I have this problem and I've looked at the various different solutions and I am now down to, I want to use